With me is the Royal Historian, author Tessa Dunlop, Royal Biographer and Expert Tom Bauer, and the Royal ex uh, Expert and author of Charles III, New King, New Court, Robert Harvard. We're just comparing who's had more number ones, uh, <coughs> best-selling books. I came in at three. Uh, Rob, obviously, with his first one, I think, yeah? It's, uh, I've had one, one more that got to number one. So two, and then in came Bauer with six. Congratulations. <laughs> I couldn't be less happy for you. Um, <laughs> all right, let's just talk... Robert, look, you've written this amazing book. It is a, it's a magnificent book about the, the new king. You could never have predicted when you wrote this that within 17 months he would be facing yeah. such a serious challenge, not just to his, his reign, but to his life. No, I mean, he, he always seemed uh, um, someone who's very... Abstemious. I mean, over all the years I, I've been following, writing about him, even made a programme with him once. Uh, you know, here's someone who's very fit for his age, lives a very abstemious life, doesn't drink much, uh, is almost fastidious about Healthy. food. Healthy. Healthy to the point, doesn't even eat lunch. Right. Actually thinks lunch is bad for you. Um, and, uh, and, and, and is very fit. And, and there can't be many people who ce have celebrated a 70th birthday with both parents still alive. So, you know... Do you have any inkling from your many great sources <coughs> about what it, this cancer actually is? No, I'm, I'm, I'm not privy to, 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 to the sort of but cancer... But it must be serious for them to be taking the action they're taking. I, it, all cancer, you know, is serious. I, I, I'm, what, I, what I am hearing is that he's proving to be not a very good patient in that he is still expecting to have all the paperwork coming, all the, all the stuff, all the, the non-public interaction stuff is continuing. Um, when I was doing the book, I mean, you know, you talk to people who, who have or do work for him and he does, he keeps very late hours. Mm. I mean, he is, he is a hard worker. He has, you know, uh, Tom will know, Tom's written about, you know, some of his peccadilloes and, uh, and, and over the he's years. He's had a tough life. He's had, a, had an extraordinary life, mm. I mean, a unique life. But the one thing that, that, that runs through it is that he, whether in good times or bad, um, he has this capacity to, he likes mountains of paper. Uh, another, another thing that I think we've all been so busy over the years um, studying his interest in other faiths, you know, the, mm. the, the long-standing thing about him wanting to be a defender of faith, that I don't think we've paid much attention to his own faith. Right. And that actually is, is much deeper and stronger, I discovered anyway, than I was aware of. Uh, and, and, and I think that's something that's going to stand Probably in Probably never more important than it is right now. Right? Absolutely. Tessa, let's talk about uh, the inevitable. Harry's flown in. Uh, he had a 40-minute maximum meeting with his father. That might be it. We don't know. Maybe he flies back again. Um, no sign of any rapprochement with his brother. I mean, what do you make of this? Um, I think that Harry's been itching to build bridges with his father, really from the, the birthday call at the back end of last year. I think the Omid Scobie book scuppered any bridges being built before Christmas. And I think that Harry, as quick as he was out of the <clears> traps, <throat> is indicative of a son who wants to find a way back in, certainly with his father, against whom he's never really had the beef. The beef was always predominantly... Well, he did attack his father's his wife in his book. Yeah, for I mean, sure. I mean, it, wasn't, it wasn't pretty, and I'm pretty sure... Pretty as ugly as it gets. I mean, if one of my family did to me, they would be done. I mean, Tom, we've talked a lot about this, but what do you make of this, this grandiose gesture? I mean, I wonder if we could say, well, it shows it must be a serious situation, because he didn't fly two weeks ago when Charles had his benign prostate uh, procedure, but he's flown straight in here. That does suggest to me it must be serious. But this rift with William looks pretty implacable. If you can't come together at a moment like this, when can you? Well, I, as I said last night to you, I was very suspicious about the dash. Mm. And I won't be surprised at all, as I hinted yesterday, if he flies back tonight or tomorrow. I think it was all just for show. I think that it was an impromptu way of getting attention. I think he's a very suspicious man. He's wrote his book for money. He's been very disloyal. And I'd be very surprised if he met Camilla when he met the father. When mm. he met the father. And I think the only person he might meet but now would be uh, Beatrice or Eugenie, mm. but otherwise he'll go back. And I think that there's absolutely no hint of reconciliation. His wife is the most bitter, unreconciled woman there is. He'll be told that, in any case, there's no future for him. And I'm told that William's real rage is about what Harry wrote about his wife. And he's right, but he's absolutely right. Yeah, he is. What he wrote was absolutely grotesque. Yeah. Only for money. Yeah. And, and he's been terrible about his father as well. I but mean, I don't think we, we should be too suspicious about a son 
wanting to have contact with his aging, ill father. I think that is a, a very simple, familial transaction, whatever water's gone under the bridge. I think it's all too easy to cast aspersions, and one hopes that Charles is, is well, larger hearted the aspersions hearted are cast that. because of the track record of Harry and his wife in the last four, he five years. He dashed off after the coronation. He was pretty un... un but they have a um, missed chance to sell... To sell trash about their family. And Let's not only that, he, he briefed Ermit Scobie for the second book, which was a disgraceful book. We discussed that at the time. Uh, totally but, uh, he, he wouldn't... He, he would have uh, got it in the neck if he hadn't come. I mean, yes, you said earlier, true. you know, damned if he does, damned if he doesn't. I think um, the, 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 the jury stays out until we see... How uh, you know this this trip is over? Does he use it as an opportunity to grandstand, or is what it? What does really... the king really feel about this situation with Harry, and also about the situation between his two sons? Uh, with Harry, its door is always open territory. It's it's he is forgiving. He is not one to to feud on this. I think he'd much rather uh, take a, mm. a, a a bit of a hit and and and, and have a, a much more normal relationship when it comes to the the brothers i think it, it, he views it as look i it, that's for william i can't sort of step in here He'd what love about to see camilla it. camilla in all this because she's had to step up now not just with the duties she's performing may take on some of the kings but also this is the love of her life who is facing this enormous personal health challenge sure but as you know piz camilla's a, a broad-shouldered woman she's a mother herself Things get complicated. We know that Harry retreated into his bedroom. He well, I'm really talking to you actually about Char but, her, her feelings about what's going on mm. with Charles. Uh, uh, oh, right. Well, I think what's interesting about Camilla is the way in which she's risen to the occasion. She's had these solo events. She looks impeccable. You doesn't even look like she's having this sort of personal storm going on in her private life. And I think that this will reframe her in many ways. And it will also, I think, help set the tone for Harry's re-entry. They all... Those two, they're mature adults, Camilla and Charles. They want this... Well, to Tom, one thing's better. for sure. They will know better than anybody that you can be very disliked by the British public and bring things back. Yeah. They're both massively more popular, Charles and Camilla, than they were in the aftermath of Diana's but death. But you're assuming something. Harry wants to come back. Well, yeah. I, I don't believe that for a moment. Yeah, there may not be I don't case. think he wants to. I don't think Meghan wouldn't dream of wanting to live in rainy London. She loves California, mm. and that's where their life is. And I think he just... Felt, I mean, you know, this is a man who a couple of weeks ago went to Jamaica, which he knew was a sensitive spot, just to stir up publicity, mm. just to earn some more money and cause a lot of trouble for Britain mm. there. You know, that couple are just they're intent on causing trouble. That is their meal ticket. Tom, I don't think that we should cast everything they do through the prism of Great Britain. Well, I actually, actually, we should judge, we should that, judge that, them on their Harry actions. Misses aspects of and their actions have been extremely damaging to the monarchy, the royal family and to this country. So exactly. I, if they change their behaviour... I'm prepared to change my view of them and the criticism. Robert, just, just, just finally, this is a big thing for the country to have to deal with this again, coming so soon after the Queen's death, Prince Philip's death. You've got Kate, who's just been in hospital. You know, Fergie, Duchess of York, has had two bouts of cancer now. It's, it's a tough time for people who, like me and you, love the royal family and the monarchy. It, it is a tough time, and it, it's, it's uh, you know, come at just as... Uh, the monarchy had sort of consolidated itself. I mean, he had enormous shoes to fill, King Charles, yeah. you know. I mean, and, and a lot of people predicted it was going to be an uphill challenge and he would stray off into politics, he would blunder here and there, there'd be a rise in republicanism. That hasn't been. I think the monarchy is, is, is in a very solid place. I think he's done a good job in less than a year and a half of consolidating it. And along comes this. But he's had plenty of other... Uh, shocks that yes, be beyond has. his control. I mean, when you think of, uh, you know, not just two rounds of The Crown, plus the Harry yeah. and Meghan's Netflix thing, plus... There's always, spare, some, there's always plus something, the right? the saga of, of, of uh, Andrew. And, and then not to mention, we haven't even gotten to republicanism in the other realms and all yeah. that. And yet, we up until last week, we weren't really thinking about the monarchy because it was doing what it always does. It was it had got boring, which is where it, it just, used to be. We, listen, we've run, out, we've run out of time, but if you want to know more about the monarchy, read this. New King, New Court, Charles III, the inside story of the inside man, Robert Harman. Great to see you. Congratulations. Thank Great you. to see you too. Thank you very much.